Okay, you chose a wind speed of 15 meters per second. This is equal to a force 7 wind, meaning between 50 and 61 kilometers an hour. In order for waves to develop, and so they don't disappear when the wind stops blowing, wind speed must be superior to 6.5 meters per second. In nature, the wind is certainly not the result of someone pressing a button. In order for there to be wind, there must be two air masses of different temperatures. The warm air rises above the cool air. The cool air tries to fit underneath into the space available. So the air moves and the wind blows. You played this now carefully because you chose to make the wind blow at force 7. The waves can now move. How does this work? the wind is blowing. Waves need time and space in order to develop. The longer the fetch length is, meaning the length of the area the wind is blowing in, the taller the waves will become. This explains why in the Mediterranean Sea, where the fetch zone is short, the waves are shorter than the plunging breakers that arrive on the beaches of Hawaii. Hawaii, in the middle of the Pacific, receives swells that can reach up to 20 meters high. When considering the height of waves, there is another rule to know. When the ocean's depth decreases, then the wave becomes taller. A wave begins to feel the ocean's bottom when the water's depth measures less than half of the wave's wavelength. Yes, it's complicated. And when I said feel, well, it's not as if the wave can smell the bottom, but it can sense it. So, a wave with a wavelength of 100 meters begins to sense when the sea bottom is less than 50 meters deep. The wave then starts slowing down before it finally breaks. The force of the breaking wave depends on the bottleneck caused by the waves slowing down as they reach shallow depths. Now choose the type of sea bottom that you want and observe its effect on the waves. You've chosen a gradual rise. This means a very gradual slowing down. This means less of a bottleneck or shrinking of wavelength and so less wave growth. Other factors also come into play. Sometimes a wind blowing from the direction of the coast can affect the shape of the incoming wave. Or sometimes, as in the land region, where the continental shelf rises gradually and the currents form sandbars, together these factors create rapidly rising waves ending as magnificent plunging breakers. 